One of the areas I carry out research in, and one of the focuses of my research laboratory, is the idea of cognitive variability. So for me, variability comes in, in many different forms. You can see uh, how we seem to get cleverer as we get older. So what we can do as children that we can do as young babies, what we can do as teenagers but not as young children. So there's a change in our cognitive abilities over age. But also take children of a given age, six-year-olds. You may find that some six-year-olds are more able than other six-year-olds. So there's variation even within an age. And then you can find extremes. You can find developmental disorders. You can find giftedness. And then there's variation at the end of, end of our lives as aging sets in. For me, it's important to, to link together all these forms of variability because I think common mechanisms can underpin them all. And um, I use a particular method to try and study that, which is called computational modeling. So I, I actually build simple computational models which try and study development across the lifespan. Uh, and what I do is I don't just build one model. So this might be a, like a model of a simple brain, an artificial neural network. You put it in an environment. It changes its connections as it experiences things. It acquires certain behaviors. If you model development like that in terms of uh, uh, an interacting system acquiring abilities, you can begin to understand how variations in the qualities of experiences, but also variations in the property of the learning mechanism might influence how well it develops. And then you can simulate large populations of these learning systems and begin to understand about how development might show variations that some may be developing more quickly and some more slowly. So what I'm trying to produce in that research is a kind of integrated framework for thinking about how cognition can vary across age, can vary within age. Now, when you do that, I think you begin to get some important insights about where psychology is as a field at the moment. And I think one of the problems in psychology is uh, it's been set up around certain kinds of disciplines, certain kinds of divisions. And it's a sensible idea. We can't study everything at once. We'll split it into uh, separate problems and we'll have separate groups of researchers study each of their problems. So within psychology, we might have one group of individuals uh, studying development. Child development, how children get better, how get cleverer as they get older. And what they're interested in is characterizing the development of the average child. And then another group says, well, we're interested in, in differences between people, individual differences, intelligence. We're not going to look at differences across age. We're just going to take a cross section and of children this age will look at differences. And then another group say, well, we, we study disorders. Now, I think it's a problem when you, you study these things individually. So it's, it's like taking a, a 100 meters race. And you might have separate people trying to say, well, we're trying to work out how the runners get from the beginning to the end by averaging together all of the individuals. So we'll just have an average runner. And then a separate group of individuals will say, well, we're trying to understand the causes of, at a given point in the race, who's in the lead and who's behind. Now, I think this causes problems in uh, separating between those different divisions of, of, of labor, as it were, because ultimately, as I indicated with the models, what you have is a set of individuals undergoing a, a process of development. And that process of development is constrained or influenced both by genetic influences and environmental influences. And what one needs to understand first is the process of development as it applies to all of us, and then the factors that modulate that process of development. Take the field of, of genetics at the moment. Genetics focuses on looking at genetic variation and seeing how it relates to uh, variations in trait and height, intelligence, things like that. So it's focused just on individual differences and the genetic causes of individual differences. But it tells us absolutely nothing about it's blind to the processes that we all share. So 
People think genetics is, well, what does it mean to be a human? Why am I, why can I talk and, and gorillas can't talk? Well, the kind of genetics at the moment really can't tell you much about that because it's just focusing on the differences between humans and how the genetic, uh, uh, genetic variation on the genome produces those differences. So that, that lack of inter integration between uh, how we all develop and how different factors modulate that development could ultimately render the, the entire field of genetics as, as somewhat askew to some of the key questions about how we develop as a species. So, so let me narrow that down to something concrete. Uh, take, take intelligence and our cognitive abilities and, and how we think. You, you might hear that those are highly heritable that genes are very important in deciding uh, how clever we are and what kind of skills we can do. And you might think from that that somehow uh, genes are limiting us in, in, in what we're able to do. But those genetic effects are just about the differences between people. So uh, let's, let's go back 50 years. 50 years ago, no one knew how to use a smartphone. No one knew, knew how to use a tablet. No one had that skill. 50 years later, most of us can use smartphones and tablets. Our brains are different. The human brain now has structures for swiping left and swiping right. That's a completely different skill that we as a species acquired. And all of this genetics of, of, of intelligence, that might make us think we were constrained in what we'd learned. But think again. Here's a population you might find that... Uh, some individuals a little bit better at using smartphones. Some individuals a little bit worse at using smartphones. And maybe the differences between them and how well, how clumsy you are at, at typing text messages, maybe some of those differences are coming from genetics. But all of that is separate to the fact that over a generation, we as a species have acquired a completely different skill. So I think it's very important to try and think about at a mechanistic basis how you can integrate processes that affect us all as a species that don't much vary between us with the kind of lesser differences you see between members of a species. So that the further steps of taking this approach forward uh, are to try and remove the barriers between these disciplines. And in fact, you could be more radical than that with, with current uh, interdisciplinary approaches. You could reorganize universities around researchers to solve problems rather than having them in separate disciplines and then trying to get different researchers to work together. But in, in this case within psychology the problem is coming in splitting between different forms of cognitive variability. And what we need to do is to take a more mechanistic basis to think about causal mechanisms to understand uh, lifespan development and the processes that produce uh, that underpin biological development, cognitive development across the lifespan. And then once we have that basic account, then we can think about how genetic influences or environmental influences modulate that trajectory of development. Whereas if we don't have a, a fundamental platform or foundation in understanding how development works for everyone, it's almost a, a distraction to look purely at the causes of variation. So if, if this approach is successful, I think we have a more realistic understanding about uh, the potential for our species, about what kind of uh, cognitive skills we could acquire uh, in 100 years or 200 years. Our genomes may be the same, but one of our uh, universal characteristics is brain plasticity, is having a large volume of association cortex that that's plastic and we can acquire new kinds of skills. We retain our senses, we retain our motor skills, there are some limitations we have in how much we can keep in mind, but there's a great deal of plasticity and potential even giving our, given our genomes to acquire new, perhaps unimagined skills in the future.